Dudes, what's happening? It's Trent again, but this time with the Windows 8 uh, version of the Wacom Companion. And uh, this this thing is running basically the full version of Windows. This is not like some kind of hybrid thing running Android or anything weird like that. Uh, I'm running, I'm going to show you guys some full on some Adobe Photoshop on here. I'm gonna do a demo later in the video. Uh, as you can see, the stand works pretty much exactly the same. I didn't do an unboxing because this thing is pretty much exactly the same as the uh, the hybrid uh, uh, that you saw in my previous video uh, in terms of the weight uh, and things like that. Some of the inputs are a little bit different uh, and there's a few things I wanna cover in terms of setting this thing up because it's a beast just to set up. Uh, it's got your power in, two USB ports, a mini DVI, and a uh, headset jack on the side, as well as the power button on that side. There are a few things to keep in mind when you're setting it all up. In fact, it's, I spent a little bit of time doing that, and uh, I'm going to go over all those things with you. Uh, there's some things that I think could be improved with it, and we're going to talk about all that stuff. So, uh, without delay, let's get to it. A couple of frustrations out of the box. Uh, you've got to install, well, you have to put in the serial code for Windows 8, and it doesn't tell you this anywhere. There's no quick setup guide or anything like that, but the serial code is actually on the power cord, which is a weird thing because anybody can look at your, like if you're in a, a restaurant or a, a cafe, somebody can just look at your power cord and write down your serial number for Windows. That's not a very secure place to put it. Uh, the second thing to note that's a little frustrating is the power um, button is on the bottom right, and that's where you would pick it up to hold it. Uh, it took me about a night and a half, uh, I would say, yeah, about two nights of uh, after work of just setting up my Adobe Photoshop and my Windows and uh, uh, just getting the quick keys programmed and getting used to the functionality of those things. And each of these buttons on the side are extremely customizable. Uh, which is really nice. In fact, you can set up on-screen uh, buttons, and I'm going to show you a little bit more about how that works later on. Uh, they can work for individual programs and switch out for any program that you have loaded. You can have it automatically switch with the functions of the rocker ring and the the quick keys do. Those are some of the you're seeing some of the on-screen uh, buttons right there, and uh, these are cool because you can actually programming program it to. For instance, if you want, uh, if you use uh, combination controls like Control Z or uh, New Layer Control N in Photoshop, you can set one of those up to just be an on-screen button that you would tap. So you don't, I mean, you know, as far as like a keyboard, it's it's pretty efficient for um, you know for doing these kind of combinations. But it's certainly I like to have a little uh, mini keyboard off to the side that that serves the uh, the function. <laughs> you see my derpy little mouse. I've been doing a lot of these derpy little drawings lately. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, but uh, I'm good. Anyway, so <laughs> there's a, you know, as far as the, the buttons go, you can see here where I'm actually using them to create uh, copies of layers, create new layers, paste them, and do some functions like that. I apologize for the uh, shaky, a little bit of a shaky head cam. I actually have my uh, GoPro attached to my my forehead and you know there's a, that's another thing that kind of bugs me a little bit is like it's very responsive if you're using the, the pen uh, to touch the on-screen controls that you've created and customized but if you try to use your finger those don't work too well and I'm not sure what that is uh, it might be something in the settings or it might be something that I you know if you have to set the um, the touch screen features for the application or the Wacom touchscreen or if it's using the if it's supposed to use the Windows touchscreen I'm not entirely sure about that and uh, I talked a little bit with the Wacom guys about some of these features there was another thing with Photoshop that I found it speeds it up dramatically somebody told me oh just switch off OpenGL but apparently that causes the system to overheat a little bit so you don't want to do that what you want to do is you want to go into your uh, power management uh, in Windows and uh, switch to high performance instead of switching off that OpenGL in Photoshop. And that's going to that's gonna give you a higher performance without the problems of overheating or, or, or running it too hard. Uh, the other thing you want to do is switch off the auto dim. Uh, sometimes it'll just dim out on you when you're not even, you know, uh, 
expecting it, and that's that can be a little frustrating. Uh, but uh, it's dependent upon the the lighting in the room, I believe. Uh, the other thing you want to do is uh, switch off that uh, power button on the bottom right. I took this to the zoo and I switched off the power or switched it to standby mode about probably 10 or 15 times. It's a little frustrating, so you want to switch off the functionality of the power key so that you have to hold it down and to power it down. Now with the uh, on-screen controls, uh, you would think that like the hybrid, you could just pinch to, to zoom in and do things like that. Um, but apparently there's a problem with Adobe is not uh, updating their drivers. And I hope that they get on that to, uh, to handle this uh, for, for tablets. Uh, and Wacom has informed me that it's an Adobe uh, issue uh, and that hopefully it'll, it'll be resolved. But until then, uh, I have a handy little Logitech. It's a very small keyboard. Uh, uh, my hands are kind of big, so you can't really tell like the actual scale, but uh, there's some other items in the background maybe you can tell, despite the fisheye. But anyway, I found that this is actually a really great solution. It's a USB keyboard. It's very small, very compact, can fit in the laptop bag uh, with the companion, and uh, it gives you the entire Photoshop quick key functionality like you're as if you're working on a home machine. So I took this uh, setup to Indiana with me on a trip to visit my parents and uh, I was surprised. I was, I was able to work really efficiently. Uh, in some regards the screen is a little bit small but I think that's because I'm contrasting it with working on a full-on 24 inch you know screen. You know, I went to uh, CTN this past weekend, and I was having some discussions with some people, and and we were talking about, man, you know, this would only be better if it was uh, a 15 inch. You know, oh man, it just it needs to be a 15 inch. But then, you know, somebody else pointed out, well, it's already like too heavy as it is, and 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 I don't really think that it's too heavy. I actually think the weight is just about perfect. It doesn't get hot at all. Um, and and as far as the uh, the weight goes, it's lighter than my MacBook. You know, but uh, it'll always be that dance. I, I think uh, in five or ten years, you know, we're going to have like paper thin, uh, you know, 15 inch or 18 inch unfoldable, uh, flexible paper pads that we just roll out and draw on. And then you're going to have dudes that are going to be like, oh, it's too heavy, or oh, I want it to be wall size, or oh, I want this thing to project like lasers onto the ceiling and create constellations and, and I need it to be pocket sized and I need it to work when I turn it upside down and I need it to be zero calories and it'll just never be it's infinite but for its time right now this thing is is a very impressive device because as I said I mean I did not not feel any difference with the keyboard setup it felt like I was working on a desktop with no slowdown at all um, in, in this instance, I had the performance uh, set, set higher, and uh, I'm just using, I think the resolution of the image is probably somewhere around, uh, if I had to guess, I'd say about 2500 by 2500. Um, I'm not using anything particularly fancy, although I believe I'm running Camtasia in the background uh, recording this video so you can see uh, you know, in on the actual screen, uh, the light kind of blows things out a little bit, so you can't really see the drawing very much. Another thing about the uh, the scale of things, it's crazy how high the resolution is. Uh, so much so that Photoshop itself, some of the icons and layer buttons and tools, they're kind of hard to see. Maybe I'm just getting old. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I have 2020 vision, and uh, and even I kind of felt like, man, I want to kind of go into the settings and, and zoom things in. At one point, I had the resolution in Photoshop set a little lower just so that the buttons were a little bit bigger. So to get a move on, I've gone ahead and sped up the video just a little bit uh, so we can just kind of get going. Um, basically, yeah, you know, uh, overall, I'm pretty happy with it. I think that there's some things that definitely things that could be used uh, could be improved. Um, I think that uh, for drawing comic books, uh, this is going to be a fantastic tool that hopefully will get me to start posting more, you know, Twilight Monk pretty soon. <laughs> um, we're already using this thing to develop the Twilight Monk video game. Uh, because it is uh, running a, a, a native Windows environment, uh, it's easy to work with uh, for all Windows-based programs. I'm really eager to try out some ZBrush, some Maya. Uh, I think it'd just be really fantastic to be sitting in a cafe and building 3D models. I think that would be really exciting and really fun to try out. Uh, one thing that I will mention, uh, sometimes I like to, I get, you know, my neck gets a little stiff uh, looking down at the sketch pad. It's one of my problems with uh, 
drawing comics for so long and one of the, the joys of working digitally is uh, working with a Wacom tablet with it sitting upright and I can tell you that this works pretty well with that too so if you ever get kind of tired or get kind of a stiff neck you can just use it as a uh, as a PC with a little Wacom tablet hooked up to the side it's a it's a full-on computer so you can do all that stuff with it uh, I plugged in the mini DVI to uh, try to run it on a 30 inch Mac display and there was a little bit of a problem apparently it works well with VGA uh, to mini DVI but uh, I think you have to have an extra adapter and I think there's information on that on the Wacom website it's just an adapter issue uh, and I'm not sure exactly what's going on with that or why but uh, whatever the case here you can see I'm programming some of the uh, the on-screen controls and uh, those are really effective or really efficient but one thing I want to mention and uh, something I didn't do after I shot this video I didn't save out some of my uh, my adjustments so if you go in and you and you create custom on-screen controls please please remember to save it uh, and close out or it, it, even if I don't even think you have to save it I think you just have to close out the tool uh, to save the changes and if you don't uh, they'll be gone so um, you know one thing to remember uh, very key could save yourself a lot of time with that I have the uh, brush size set to the rocker ring and undo and redo and uh, that works pretty well for me and I'll dig into my process a little bit more in another video I'm really looking forward to sharing some uh, videos of some drawings coming to life on this device. Uh, I don't want to call it a review because I want you to figure out if you like it, if you're thinking of getting one, if you've got one. Uh, please comment with your thoughts, uh, any questions that you have, and look forward to some of my next videos where I'm going to be showing you some comic book pages coming to life. I'm going to show you some painting uh, stuff coming to life, and uh, I look forward to seeing you then.